We're going right into it. Yeah. Yeah. This is probably where you want us. <laughs> so. Hi there. Uh, we're just going to read a few prepared statements, and then we're going to head out. If that's all right with you guys. We're delighted uh, to be here, to be free. We're nervous <laughs> to be home. After 50 days in Torah prison, five days uh, not being able to fly out of Cairo, here we are. We're home because of the work of many thousands of people from all walks of life, from all stripes of the political spectrum, from Canada, from Egypt, and from around the world. They were outraged at our arbitrary arrest and spoke out for our release. Our deepest gratitude goes out to all of them. Your hard work mattered. Your voice mattered. It made a difference. We owe you our freedom. We were detained without charges for nearly two months, along with 600 others. All of us swept up in a brutal roundup on August 16th. We were beaten. We were housed in very cramped conditions, sleeping on the concrete with cockroaches, sharing a single tap and squat toilet. We were not allowed phone calls, were only allowed a few visits, and were given very little time outside our cells. We sometimes despaired, sometimes quarreled. But we still quarreled. <laughs> Occasionally. We wondered as recently as last Friday if this nightmare would drag on for years. For our freedom, uh, there are literally thousands who we'd like to thank. We thank the medical, arts, and film communities who mobilize such inventive, effective, and heartfelt actions on our behalf. We'd also like to thank our universities, York and Western, our colleagues, and especially our students. We would not have been freed if not for the extraordinary efforts of quite a few people, including the embassy in uh, Cairo. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you. Thank you to David Drake, to Iman Sabri, to Stephen Randall, to Nicholas Bellarose, to Ricky. Thank you to everybody who lost many, many nights of sleep and time with their family uh, in the embassy in Cairo. Thank you to, to the team here. Amanda Reed especially, who was an uh, invaluable link with our families, uh, to the DFATD in Ottawa, uh, and thank you to all the politicians from all levels of government who worked tirelessly for a release. We especially want to thank you, Prime Minister Stephen Harper. We want to thank you, Minister Baird, and we want to thank you, Deputy Minister Yelich. We also want to thank the journalists who fought to keep this story alive, activists in Canada, Egypt, and around the world who so effectively mobilized their networks, ordinary citizens, especially from our hometowns of London and Toronto, who spoke out, Palestinian solidarity, social justice, and queer movements who refused simplistic cliches about homophobia and Islamophobia and kept their eyes focused on the real issues. We want to thank our friends, our families, those people who stood, stood by us, were steadfast in the belief uh, that, that we were innocent. They never wavered. They made Herculean efforts that never faltered. And they were with us at every moment of this long and frightening ordeal. We know at times our families rightly cursed us. And we know we owe them several decades worth of flowers and back massages for everything they've been through. But we never for a moment doubted their unconditional love. Five folks deserve special mention. Uh, John's sister Cecilia, who put her life on hold to tirelessly and brilliantly hand out buttons and give speeches and build websites and shake every tree. A thousand kisses to her. Is she here? So she's downtown. Okay. Yeah. Justin. A tireless warrior of words and deeds who has aged years in the past seven weeks but still looks 27. Likewise, a thousand kisses. John's partner, Stephen, um, who I learned a lot about actually in our time, who put his uh, many fears into the freezer for the duration and worked like the superb boyfriend that he is, uh, pulling in every possible favor. I know, and you know, John owes you big time. You're never going to have to do dishes again, Stephen. 
Tarek's dad, who's right here, right here, here. here. <laughs> who arrived in Cairo 10 days ago and turned the city and our prison upside down using every brilliant means imaginable to secure our release. If ever any of you get arrested anywhere, the person to call is right here, Dr. Mahmoud Lubani, our hero. And also, of course, Tarek's brother Mohammed, who worked really closely with the team. It wouldn't be the first time my family's confiscated my passport. I think that's about to happen, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, in hindsight, it's, it's really obvious that we made mistakes. In medicine, uh, we try to embrace our mistakes, to own them, to articulate them, to learn from them. We try to make them sound fancy. We don't call them mistakes, we call them critical errors. We made quite a few. We focused on getting to Gaza, planning to only stop overnight in Cairo. We thought we could avoid the violence that continues to tear Egypt apart. We were wrong. We thought our work on August the 16th, mine as a doctor and John's as a filmmaker, tending to the wounded and documenting their plights, we thought that that would, we thought that that would, uh, we thought that that would make, mean that we wouldn't be blameworthy in the eyes of uh, the Egyptian authorities. We thought that working in, with wounded in a field hospital would give us a pass on what was to come. We were wrong. We thought that the really extraordinary efforts of the embassy, of our lawyers, of our friends and families would ensure that our case would be accorded fair execution and due process. We were wrong. Instead, we learned a lot of lessons. Um, some were hard, some were welcome, some were surprising. We learned lessons of community that 38 men, blacksmiths, professors, construction workers, students, can coexist day after day in a three meter by 10 meter cell with grace and humor and kindness. And uh, we learned lots of practical things. I'm a tinkerer, so I really enjoyed uh, learning how to make a jailhouse kettle out of two nails, two bottle caps, and some wire. I can show you if you're interested. Um, we learned to make prison glue out of macaroni and, and sugar. Incredibly strong. Just boil it, let it ferment for three days. We learned lessons of analysis. The overthrow of an elected government by a military is wrong. Killing civilians is wrong no matter who does it. But believing in democracy, justice, and fairness in the rule of law certainly does not make us members of the Muslim Brotherhood, as some suggested. We are part of, instead, clearly, of civil society in, in Egypt and everywhere, which agrees with the current government on a few things and disagrees on many. We agree with the Brotherhood on a few things and disagree with them on many. We call out the collusion of Western powers seemingly unwilling to denounce military violence against peaceful citizens, and perhaps most crucially, on the ongoing role of billions in U.S. military aid that, despite recent budget trims, is nevertheless helping return Egypt to a nightmare of military dictatorship. We learned lessons of activism, um, things that we always sort of speculated on, but uh, actually knew were true. That pressure from concerned citizens works, that petitions make a difference, that grassroots and mainstream strategies like diplomacy, children's drawings, press conferences, personal phone calls, demonstrations, artist videos, hunger strikes and legal interventions can work. That they bring out, uh, they can bring out uh, days like this, very happy days for us. We're humbled and we're inspired particularly by those who don't agree with us. By those who don't agree with us but who nevertheless took a position and spoke out for our release as a matter of principle. We know you've got some questions for us and we'll be happy to answer them tomorrow. Right now our families are waiting impatiently for us downtown. So thanks again for this incredible welcome home. This ordeals affected us profoundly and it's going to take some time to bounce back. But the love shown for us here today um, and love from our families, we know, is going to be the best cure. We'll keep trying to make a difference, be it in London, in Toronto, in Gaza, or elsewhere. As we leave here tonight, we'd like to ask you to keep the plight of all those who are being unjustly detained 
in Egypt and around the world, in Canada, in our thoughts, in our hearts, and in our actions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Guys, any comments on what's next for you? Do you want to just say a few words about what you're going to do in the next week? Pizza and wings. <laughs> so that's to, that's tonight. So, yeah, it's um we 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 have to figure it out. We're we're just landing, and the and the big priority is seeing our families now. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, we are doing yeah. that. You've got the bag. Fantastic. Great. Good to see you. Good to see you.